Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on non-Mendelian inheritance, or inheritance that doesn't follow the laws laid down by Mendel. So I'm going to give you a few scenarios. Color blindness, which is recessive, most often appears in boys. If it appears in girls, their fathers are always colorblind, but their mothers rarely are. This is an example of how you may test for colorblindness. If you can see the W in these dots, then you are not colorblind. Another situation is if you cross, cross certain red tulips with certain white tulips, all of the F1 generation will be pink, and that's not what we expect from Mendel's laws. Another situation, if you cross other red tulips with white tulips, all of the F1 generation will be red and white striped, which is also not what you expect from Mendel's laws. These are all examples of non-Mendelian inheritance, and they don't follow Mendel's rules or Mendel's laws. So I want to talk about the first situation I talked about, and those are sex-linked genes. Sex-linked genes are recessive alleles located on the X chromosomes. Sex-linked conditions are caused by recessive alleles on the X chromosome, and they appear more often in males or XY individuals because males only have one X chromosome. There's no possibility of another dominant allele covering the phenotype of the recessive allele. Males are not truly diploid for their sex chromosomes because they only have one X chromosome and one Y, as opposed to two of the same chromosome, which females or egg producing individuals have two X chromosomes. They are truly diploid for their sex chromosomes. Now there's a very specific notation to indicate that an allele is found on the X chromosome and is what we consider sex linked. So let's give an example. For a gene with two alleles, big A and little a, that is located on the X chromosome, we would give the designation of an uppercase A as a superscript to an X as the dominant allele. The uppercase A shows that it is dominant, and the fact that it is superscript on the X shows that it is on the X chromosome. The recessive allele has a lowercase a, but it's also a superscript on the X, again showing that it is on the X chromosome. Now we're going to assume that that lowercase recessive allele causes a disease or a specific visible phenotype just for the purposes of this video. So what are the possible genotypes that a male could have with a sex-linked gene? Well, they could have the dominant allele, and in which case we would denote it as an X uppercase, up, I'm sorry, superscript uppercase A Y. The phenotype would then be unaffected. They would not display the phenotype of the recessive allele. On the other hand, if they had the recessive allele, they would be affected. They would display this phenotype because they have no second chromosome to have another allele on it. In females or egg producing individuals, it's very different. They have two X chromosomes. So a female can be homozygous dominant and of course be unaffected because they do not have the lowercase a allele. They can be heterozygous and again their phenotype would be unaffected. And they could be of the homozygous recessive genotype and in this case they would be affected because both of their alleles again on the X chromosome are the lowercase affected allele. So how does a recessive allele location on the X chromosome lead to the inheritance pattern that was presented on the first slide. Let's do an example. So if an X uppercase A Y sperm producing male mates with a heterozygous female, what would the inheritance pattern look like? So let's do a Punnett square to figure this out. Let's look at the male first. So the X big A and then of course the Y would go through meiosis and some of the sperm would have the X chromosome with the uppercase A dominant allele and some of the sperm would have the Y chromosome. In the females, they would produce eggs by the process of meiosis, and some of the eggs would have the X with the dominant allele, and some would have the X with the recessive allele. And if we looked at what would be produced, we could take the X chromosome from the father and the X chromosome for the mother, and in this case, a homozygous dominant female would not display the trait. In the next case, again, the X big A from the father, but an X lowercase a from the mother would give us a heterozygous female. But in this case, none of the females, the XX individuals, none of these offspring would be affected by the lowercase a allele because they have a dominant allele overriding it. Let's look at our males. In the case of the males, the father would give the Y chromosome, the mother could give the X with the dominant allele, this would be an unaffected individual, 
and then the second son could have a y from the father and an x with the lowercase allele from the mother and in this case this is the only affected child in this punnett square so 50 percent of the male or xy offspring would be affected in this case let's look at the mother as a heterozygote the mother is what we call a carrier she has the recessive allele but she doesn't display the recessive phenotype because she has the dominant allele that is masking that recessive allele. The only way for a daughter to be affected in this kind of a cross is if the father has the recessive allele, and then the mother would also have to have one recessive allele. Let's look at how that cross would go. In this case, after meiosis, the father would give an X chromosome with the lowercase a, and that would mean that one of the daughters would in inherit a lowercase a from the father, and a lowercase a from the mother, and in this case, 50% of the female offspring would be affected. But the only way a father can pass it on to his daughter is if he is also affected, and a father cannot pass it on to his son because a father can only pass a Y chromosome onto their son. So as I said, sex-linked genes are recessive alleles located on the X chromosome. So why aren't genes on the Y chromosome considered sex-linked? Well, it has to do with size and how many genes can fit on a chromosome. The Y chromosome is really small. It actually only has one gene on it. The X chromosome is large and it has a lot of genes. This small Y chromosome, the only gene on it is called the SRY gene. And individuals who have a Y chromosome with a functional SRY gene will have the outward physical characteristics of a male. If there were any other genes on the Y chromosome, they would of course be sex linked because only males or XY individuals have a Y chromosome but the fact is there aren't any other genes on the Y chromosome. So we only talk about sex-linked genes as recessive alleles on the X chromosome. So the next example of an inheritance pattern that does not follow Mendel's laws is incomplete dominance. So this violates Mendel's law of dominance, which states that alleles have a dominant recessive relationship, which is demonstrated here on the left-hand side. In this case, if you had a homozygous dominant red flower, and you crossed it with a homozygous recessive white flower, 100% of the next generation would be heterozygote and their phenotype would be the dominant phenotype because the dominant allele dominates over the recessive allele. But look at our example here on the right-hand side where I have a homozygous dominant red flower crossed with a homozygous recessive white flower and 100% of the next generation is heterozygous, but it's pink. It's a new phenotype. It doesn't have the dominant phenotype. So in incomplete dominance, the heterozygote has a new phenotype, and that new phenotype is a blend of the parental phenotypes. The first question you might ask is, hmm, what if that's just a mutation? What if this isn't an incomplete dominance? Well, we could check for that. We could do a test cross. We could cross each of these heterozygous individuals and see what we would get from a Punnett square. So each of these heterozygous would give one R to a one of their gametes and a little r to one of their other gametes. And what would we produce? Well, we would get a homozygous dominant, and sure enough, up pops the red dominant phenotype again. So this isn't a mutation. Again, the heterozygotes come up with the pink blended phenotype, and our homozygous recessive comes back up with the white homozygous recessive phenotype. So it's not a mutation because both of the original phenotypes are present in the homozygous flower. So what you need to realize for incomplete dominance is there's appearance of a new third phenotype in the heterozygote. We still have two alleles. We still have three genotypes, but in this case, we have three phenotypes instead of two with the classic dominant recessive relationship. And that third phenotype is a blend between the dominant and the recessive phenotype. So the last type of non-Mendelian inheritance that I want to talk about is codominance, and it's another violation of Mendel's law of dominance. In this case, one allele is not dominant over the other, they are both expressed. So we have a specific notation for alleles that show codominance, and this is something that really troubles students every year, so you need to pay very close attention to this. So in the case of codominance, we can have a red flower and a white flower, but we have different notations for the alleles. If a certain characteristic exhibits codominance, the way we note that is we would have one allele, let's say the red allele, I would give it an uppercase R 
as a superscript to another letter that's just the holder. And in this case, I've chosen F because it's a flower. Both my red and white allele are denoted with uppercase alleles, and they are both being held onto by the same uppercase holder letter. You can choose any letter except I. I is reserved for blood types, so you need an uppercase letter to hold on to the superscript. And this shows that the alleles are of the same gene because they're both being held onto by the same uppercase letter. And then the fact that both of the alleles are in uppercase and as a superscript shows that they are both dominant. We wouldn't want to have a big R and a little r here because then that would imply that the white was recessive to the, to the red and it's not. So let's look at what the genotypes would be for this red flower. It would be F superscript big R, F superscript big R. And then the white would be similar, F superscript big H. I chose H, I could have chosen W. What letter you choose doesn't matter. What's important is that it is superscript. What would happen if we did a cross of these two codominant flowers? Well, let's do our Punnett square. And this flower could give an F big R, and that's all it can give. I really could have done just a two by two square here. I did a four by four. We could, this flower, white flower, is going to give the F big H and the F big H. And what type of flower are we going to see in this first generation? It is going to exhibit both phenotypes. Our heterozygote is going to be denoted uppercase F, uppercase superscript R, uppercase F, uppercase superscript H, and this is a heterozygote that has red and white striped. So what we see in codominance is the presence of both of the dominant traits. You could see it in the form of stripes. It could be polka dot. There's many different ways in nature that codominance can be exhibited, but the critical part is that you see both phenotypes. So let's go through how we're going to be able to tell the difference between classic Mendelian inheritance, incomplete dominance, and codominance, and then we'll talk a little bit more about sex linked. So for classic Mendelian inheritance, you would have a case where uppercase G is green and it's dominant, lowercase G is yellow and it's recessive. Green is dominant over yellow, so if you cross a, a green and a yellow, you are going to get a green individual if both of the parental are homozygous. In the case of incomplete dominance, if you crossed a green and a yellow individual, you're gonna get a blend between the two phenotypes. So in this case, I've shown kind of a lighter yellowy green. This is what we know as incomplete dominance, the presence of a new phenotype in the cross of the dominant times the recessive. And that new phenotype is a blend between the two. Again, we have the uppercase G as green, the lowercase G as yellow. In this incomplete dominance, there is no difference in notation. You must simply remember that the heterozygote has a blended phenotype between the two parents. In the case of codominance, both phenotypes are expressed together in the next generation, and the notation is critical. In this case, I've used an uppercase A to hold on to the alleles, and I've said A uppercase G is green, A uppercase yellow is, I'm sorry, Y is yellow, and to show the genotypes for each one of these. Note the very specific notation for codominance with no specific notation for incomplete dominance. And again, this is often a very difficult trouble spot for kids every year in class. How do we identify sex-linked characteristics? Well, you want to look for conditions that are more frequently expressed in males and specifically if they have unaffected mothers. You can look for characteristics that cannot be passed from fathers to their sons as fathers only give their sons a Y chromosome and sex-linked characteristics are always recessive alleles on the X chromosome. And then the notation for sex-linked genes is very, very important. Females can have three possible genotypes Males can only have two possible genotypes, and males cannot be heterozygous for a condition that is sex-linked. So that's all for tonight.